welcome back to our class don't forget to subscribe if it is your first time to visit our channel today we'll be looking at the human eye all right let's look at um, the human eye in detail we are going to start with the part and its function what you call the part and the function of the human eye so in this case, sometimes it could be the adaptation of the eye for its function. It means that you are supposed to give the part and the function of, of the eye. Okay, let's look at uh, number one, which you call the cornea. So we are saying that it's very important in the refraction of light rays from the object. So when the, the, the light comes from the object and falls on the eye, the first layer to diffract uh, this light to bend it, this light it will be the cornea. Then number two is the pupil. Pupil is this space, uh, space between this uh, iris uh, and this iris. So this space is what called a pupil. So the function of the pupil is to allow light to enter into the eye because of the space which is there. So it means that light can go through uh, that space so that it's being focused. And then you have the iris. What's the function of the iris? Iris is because it is um, making this space, it, so it brings about control of the size of the pupil. It controls the size of the pupil. If you want to look at this one very clear, you can look at the cat. At night, you see that it has a very big pupil, and then uh, during day, the pupil is very small. So what causes that? It means that when the iris tries to pull away from each other, then the size of the pupil becomes big. Then when it tries to come next to each other, yes, then it means that the size of pupil reduces. So when the pupil size increases, it means that more amount of light will enter the eye. Then you have the lens. This lens, this solid substance is called a lens. The function of the lens is to shift <clears throat> changes the shape for near and the far objects. So it is very important in focusing the near and the far object. So it means that if you are not able to see near and the far objects, you can see near, you can't see far, then it could be a problem coming from uh, the lens. Then you have what called a scleroid. Uh, this one sometimes you call them scleroid. It is very important in protecting the eye against damage. So it means that it, 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 if you look at it, the eye in the, the inner part of the eye is being protected by the scleroidic, the scleroidic member. Uh, then you have uh, another part which called the choroid. This is the dark part of the, the eye. This part is dark, yes. It is very important in reducing refraction. So, so why is it um, important? Uh, when the light rays, yes, come, uh, yes, sometimes some of them, they are being they are focused to the retina, yes? When the light rays come, uh, they are being focused on the retina. So some of it, uh, like, it tries to go through. So uh, it, it, it should be reflected back. It's supposed to be reflected back. So the function of this uh, choroid is it tries to absorb that light so that it's not being reflected back to or bring about different images in the eye. Then you have the retina. This is where the image is formed. Basically, retina has the sense, uh, sensory cells uh, which, the, the, which can detect uh, during the dim light and the bright light, which you call the cones and rods. So the cones are very important um, even in seeing the color. While the rods, are very, they cannot see the what? They, they cannot detect the color. So basically, uh, cones are frequently used during bright light or during day, and then the rods are be, being uh, used more during night. It means that uh, nocturnal animals like dogs, um, like lions, the one which hunt at night, their rods are more advanced or they are more developed compared to the cones. Why? Because they can't see the color, but they can see at night better than seeing during day. So rods are very important in sensing small amount of light. So small amount of light falling on it, it can be sensed. 
So uh, you have another part which called a yellow spot. Yellow spot is, is where the clearest image is formed. So this part which um, bends uh, outwards, it is where the clearest image is formed. Sometimes when you are looking at, you, you tilt your head so that you can focus an individual nicely or you can see the individual clearly. So it means that you're trying to make the image fall on the yellow spot. Sometimes we call it uh, phobia. Sometimes we call it uh, phobia. So this is where the clearest image is formed. Then you have what you call uh, the optic nerve. This one carries impulse from the retina to the brain. When we talk about the impulse, we are talking about an electrical message, an electrical message. So uh, when, the, when light falls on the retina, retina must change this light into an electrical message. That electrical message is being carried to the brain in the form of uh, impulse. So, and so therefore, it means that an impulse is an electrical message. So um, optic nerve, uh, they, are carrying, um, they are carrying this impulse to the brain. Whenever you talk about optics, it means that you are talking about light. Then you have what you call the blind spot. Blind spot has no vision. Why? Because we don't have any cells there which can detect light. So whenever light falls on the blind spot, you won't be able to see. Then you have the suspensory ligaments. This one holds the lens in the position. So if this is the lens, you can see that these small threads are holding this lens so that the lens can be in position. Then you have the vitreous humor. Vitreous humor is very important in giving the eye its shape. So this fluid which is found in this um, eyeball, so it brings, it, it prevents comp compression. So because it is a liquid, so it prevents compression and then the eyeball can obtain uh, its shape. Then lastly, uh, we have what's called aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is found in front. It's very important in supporting the cornea and also the front chamber of the eye because it's also like uh, fluid-like. So it brings about part of the eye so that it can stay, everything can stay in what? It can stay in, in, in shape or in position. And also it balances. If the, this side there is a pressure, then this pressure on this side should be balanced by uh, this fluid, this side. So basically, that's uh, some of the functions of the, of, of the eye. If they ask you the adaptation of the eye, it means that you have to look at one part, then give the function. Give the one part and then give the function. So please don't go to the exam without knowing the functions of each part because you don't know which part they might bring if it comes. Let's look at um, binocular 